Write what you know, little ghost. Miller's Girl comes to us from Lionsgate Films and writer, producer, director Jade Haley Bartlett. This stars Martin Freeman, Jenna Ortega, and Gideon Adlin, set at a Tennessee school where a couple students, Winnie, played by Gideon Adlin, and Cairo Sweet, played by Jenna Ortega, are trying to get with their teachers. Why? Why the fuck not? It's a comedy drama with a little bit of psychological thriller spoofiness about it, a lot of creepiness, given the subject matter. And yeah, that's pretty much your plot right there. Martin Freeman has been in quite a few good movies. He's a terrific actor. He's had quite the storied career. And Jenna Ortega is somebody that a lot of people know, but if you're kind of drawing a bit of a blank, remember remember her, the girl that got her leg broken in the beginning of Five Cream or Scream, and she was also in Scream 6. And she was also in X. X gonna give it to you. Don't know the rest of the lyrics, so I'm just gonna say that's who she was in that. But Jenna Ortega, kind of new scream queen of horror. Because she's really, really good at playing the damsel in distress or even the badass. But in this, she basically is a student that is a bit repressed. She loves literature. She is wise beyond her years. And she kind of zeroes in on Jonathan Miller, a girl zeroing in on a guy named Miller in a movie called Miller's Girl. What fucking sorcery is this, Miss Bartlett? What are you trying to pull? In all seriousness, the movie does kind of play up, you know, how would an older teacher, as opposed to a younger teacher, and a student interact with each other when a creative assignment kind of maybe brings them together and maybe there's likes, you know, as far as like, you know, certain pieces of literature and also maybe there's a bit of chemistry and we're about to get some unholy unionization going on here. We kind of maybe get allusions to that and everything. Unfortunately, the movie also ends up being kind of aggressively boring to the point that even with the star power, Martin Freeman and the upcoming, you know, star power of Jenna Ortega and even Gideon Adlin, who I have seen mutuals talk about <clears throat> she's in this playing winnie fortunately she is better than the winnie that was in the wonder years at least as far as the character goes and also anybody remember bottoms remember the woman uh that was sleeping you know with you know shut up nerd i fucked your mom remember you know that woman yeah yeah that that, that woman's in this uh Doug Mara, and I can't pronounce her last name. She's fucking hot i will just say that she is very very beautiful she's been in quite a few movies and, yeah, there's also a coach <coughs> played by a guy that, his name's Bashir, and that's all I can pronounce of his particular name. He's in Top Gun Maverick. And from there, we basically just have this movie where people are trying to stretch this material out to its goddamn limits. And while I appreciate what Miss Bartlett was trying to say, and there's no doubt that she can go on to do bigger and better projects as a first effort... This was just kind of meh, at least it started out that way, and then ended up being pretty goddamn boring. And that's unfortunate, given the star power. And then it just gets more ridiculous, more ridiculous. And it just proves <coughs> there are some fucked up people you really shouldn't trust out there. And the long monologues by Jenna Ortega really started to test my patience after we got past about the third one. So, yeah, that's really all I have to say right there. It is on Amazon for roughly eight bucks, depending on, you know, the tax... Um, you know, brackets that you have in your particular state. I paid roughly about eight bucks and decided to give it a shot. And I can kind of see why the critics and audiences alike were kind of down on it. That being said, I'm willing to give Miss Bartlett's uh, next project or two another chance. Hopefully she gets a chance to do more. Nevertheless, it was what it was. It just wasn't very good. In fact, I would say it was pretty goddamn bad. Three, two, one. Spoilers. So, basically... There's, there, there's this like bond between Winnie and Cairo that's kind of a bit weird. Winnie almost acts like, you know, a bit of a floozy, as the kids might have said years and years ago. Well, before I was born, probably. And there is this one kind of uh, neat little line by uh, Jenna Ortega talking about longing. Why we're longing like a fucking veil. And it shows how obsessive Cairo is. <laughs> And how sweet she really isn't. Um, she's into a lot of literature. She's into a lot of music you wouldn't think she would be uh, into for somebody her age. And we get flirtations between them. But Miller understands boundaries. Well, I mean, kind of does. He's, I guess, just as guilty as, um, you know, 
Jenna Ortega's character is, and also when he wants to sleep with the coach. Um, uh, the guy named Boris, played by that guy whose first name is Bashir. And she's, you know, kind of flirting with him a little bit, and we get some flirtation stuff, and we get talk about this, you know, project. <laughs> and then there's, like, time at uh, dinner, between, you know, with the... Uh, you know, with Miller and Boris and also um, Miller's wife, Beatrice, who says it's not that you can't write, it's that you won't. And there's like a poetry one-act type thing that's happening at this Victorian village. <clears throat> Miller and Cairo are there. And we don't ever actually see anything happen. It's just all in a you know, Cairo's head, she's writing out this story and everything. I do have to say that Jenna excels at roles like this. I just wish the material was better. And then, basically, they kind of put the thing to the side with Winnie and just focus on Miller and Miller's Girl. Again, in a movie called Miller's Girl. How goddamn weird. So, the story grows, um... Miller isn't very happy with it. Basically says, hey, you need to, like, find another person other than Henry Miller. Read up on Henry Miller. You'll understand. But, yeah, he's not very happy with that because she's basically making it about, you know, uh, her professing her love for him. And then it just gets worse. <clears throat> gets worse. I wrote down, this is dreadfully boring is what I wrote down. And... Cairo's a bit unhinged. She decides to ruin his life, puts a short story in there, and since his name is implied, he can't find a way to uh, get out of this. And also, his wife basically will leave him if he's suspended, even though he may have not done anything. It's just the implication that basically ruins his reputation because he refused her advances. Or maybe something did did happen, and then he cut it off. And this kind, it, it could be, it could be open to who knows what's actually going on in somebody's head. No, it's actually that the teacher just has life ruined. Cause sure, he was interested in Jenna Ortega, but yeah, couldn't do anything about that teacher student. Nobody would ever do anything like that. And he, she basically used um, what her and Winnie had planned as a way to ruin um, Miller, and also if, you know, Winnie wanted to go to testify against her, she would, you know, find a way to ruin, uh, you know, the coach's career. That's, that's nice. It just proves how evil Jenna Ortega is. This would have worked if the movie was better. And then she got him <coughs> suspended. His marriage probably dissolved and all this stuff. She just is reading her story and all this, and it just ends. It ended with a whimper, barely, e barely even like you know a uh, gasp or whatever. It just, it just ended. It just ended. And it's like okay, it was certainly a movie that happened on film. It certainly was something I watched for ninety minutes. It was a waste of star power, but again, hopefully Miss Bartlett can do bigger and better projects. This was a total fucking misfire and gets an F. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Like, share, subscribe, Twitter handle in the description. I'm John Rethlin. I'll see you soon.